Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've been making some a lot of progress on the first volume of my treasury of stitcheries that I've been putting together. So I'm ready to move on to the next stage and I just wanted to show you where I'm at so I can explain how the book's kind of going together. Let me show you what, what I've been up to. So here's my stack of pages. I've decided that was that was fat enough. That's going to be fat enough for the book because I've still got to make the cover yet. I've, I've done them in pairs like I showed before and then each pair has been stitched together around here, here and here. Like this. And I've been doing little bits of stitching to reflect um, the design. Um, of, of, the, of the squares that I was sent. I've included the stitcher's name, I've embroidered the stitcher's name um, somewhere in the, on the page. And then when they've all been stitched together, I've now got this kind of, kind of a, a spine going on here, but obviously that it's not attached here. It's just been attached here, here and here. So I think the next thing I need to do is to add I've cut another piece the same length ooh, hang on the same a distance that way but long enough to kind of wrap around like this and and it's kind of going to go together like a traditional book binding method where all of these signatures are going to be attached to this piece and then the whole lot will go inside the cover. I'm going to stitch each of the signatures through here into this piece. So each pair, it'll be a little bit fiddly, but not too bad. Each pair I will stitch down there and then down there. So eventually I'll end up with them all attached together with this piece. Lots and lots, of, you'll see lots and lots of lines of stitching, but that won't show afterwards. I will need to make my cover, which will wrap around the whole thing like this. And then to attach them together, I need two pieces like this, one for the front and one for the back. And that will be stitched all around here. And then I will bring these two pieces up and match them together. I'll trim them so that, they, so that they're the right size. I'm not going to trim them until I'm ready. So I will stitch all the way around there and all the way and up around here. So then the whole thing and the same on the back. So this piece will go here. It'll be stitched all the way around there and up around there. So then the whole thing will be securely attached together. And possibly when I'm putting these this sort of inside front page onto the cover I will enclose whatever I'm going to tie front and back if, if I decide I'm going to do a tie um, closure. I might just slip a piece of sari ribbon or something in here that will then wrap right around. That's one of my favourite ways of, of closing because it's just so easy. So th I just wanted to show you how that's going to assemble because the next thing for me to do is I need to, whatever I want Kind of stitching wise on this inside front page i need to i need to stitch into it now before i attach them together um and i think i'm going to put here something like my tre treasury of stitching my treasury of stitches i think that's what i'm going to call it my treasury of stitches 2023 or something or my treasury of stitches volume one something like that i'm going to end up with at least three volumes just for this one <laughs> And then on the front cover, I, need, I want to make that really pretty. I think probably I'll cover the rest of this with just straight stitching. And then when the front cover's ready and I've done all of this bit and I've done the inside back pages as well, whatever I want to do to them, I'll be ready to, to stitch the whole lot together. For the outside front page, what I'm planning is to put a little piece of felt or wadding, I'll see what I've got, just inside or you know to back it with because um, that, that's not going to show that I'll be covered by the inside front page and then I thought this is a good opportunity to use some of these beautiful pieces that um, Pat sent me um, and so I'm going to use these to make um, 
the front and back covers. I might put heart on the front and the back. And and do like it, and I'll get some lovely prints, little scraps of prints and things that I've got as well. I've got, I've got some beautiful fabric prints and things. This would be a good chance to use them. And I will patch them together much in the same way that, that Pat has there, actually. Some of these pieces like this I could include as well, but I might use them as tabs in the page instead, possibly, or on one of the other books. So the other covers I'm going to be doing, I've got different ideas for the other ones. This one I want to do is a kind of Victorian style crazy patchwork. So I've got that to be doing. I think the first thing is I want to get this all secure. I want to stitch these now onto into this spine piece. And then I want to just do whatever, whatever wordage I decide. So I need to actually, the wordage will go there and then I'll fill it in with a whole lot of straight stitching here. Yeah. Just wanted to come and do this now before I start putting it together and then I'm, so that I can take it downstairs now and start working on that and I'll come back in a couple of minutes for in in just a second for you <laughs> for a few hours for me i'm ready to move on to the next stage it's been a few days since that last little clip that i recorded so i can't remember exactly where i got to but um I, i'm uh, i'm ready to move on so i wanted to show you where i've got up to okay, i've done my little inside front um page and i'm really chuffed with it with how it came out so this is um this will be the outside cover of my book eventually and this is what it will look like on the end. This will be the inside, the first inside page. Oh, I'm so loving, I look so cute. I really love it. And I'll probably repeat that design with some little changes um, on the other, on, on subsequent um, volumes, because <laughs> there's gonna be at least three volumes just for this one swap. And then we're going into another swap. So I reckon I'll end up with four, four volumes by the end of this year. <laughs> So now this inside page will actually will actually sit like this. The cover will come around and I will attach these two together through here so that it will in effect hold the cover onto the rest of the book. And then I will do the same thing with the inside back page. So it'll come up like that attached together I think I'm just gonna leave the inside back page plain if anything I would just do some rows and rows of straight stitching simply because I just love to do rows and rows of straight stitching I might even just do it in a plain natural colored sashiko thread because I think that looks lovely so I did the um, I, I, I didn't do exactly as I planned with them um, joining this edge together so if you remember each of these pairs of pages has been stitched together around these three sides so it was it was when I last showed you they were all attached here but they were kind of loose here and I was going to just wrap that smaller piece around and stitch between now I tried doing that and it got all a bit fiddly and difficult and I got fed up with it <laughs> undid it and started again and what I've done instead was much simpler I just stacked them all up as neatly as I could and then I've just run some stitches through you can see where the thread goes along here so I've started let's go where I've, I've started here with a knotted with a knot in my in my thread I've taken a stitch all the way up here catching each of the pages each of the signatures and then I've gone along and then come all the way down, catching each of the signatures. And I've got along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down. And I fastened off here. And I guess if I wanted to be really safe, I could run another piece of thread through as well. But I think this is pretty strong thread. I don't think it's going to break. This isn't going to get a massive amount of wear and tear, so I'm not going to worry too much. And I think it's probably not the most professional way to do it, but I think it's going to work. And it was just so easy and straightforward. I'm quite happy with that. Just wanted to show you now before I go and hide that bit so I could show you what I'd actually done. And then the, so that the um, back cover will be attached in exactly the same way as all the other pairs of pages have been attached together, except I'll leave this one loose and that will attach to the front outside cover. Same with this front inside page, it'll attach to this first, first inner page here and it'll attach around, around all three sides and I'll leave this bit loose because this bit will eventually be attached to the cover. First of all, I need to do the decorative bit on my cover. Um, so 
I just thought I'd quickly show you how I did this as well. So I just drew it out. I just sat and uh, scribbled it in front of the telly on a bit of old copy paper. I used one of those um, heat erasable friction pens. I haven't got one handy now. I've left them downstairs. Um, because I thought it would show up nice and dark and um, but I can rub it out if I want to. Um, and you can see there were a few sort of false starts. Uh, but yeah, I just I just did that and then I did the, the my and the of and then sort of just free-handed these in when it came to it. Yeah, I'm really chuffed with that. And like subsequent volumes, I might do a similar thing, but slightly different colours and, um, and perhaps different flowers here or, or something. I don't know. I quite like the idea of them being similar, but, but different. And then I found that, um, you can see there, hopefully, yeah, I found that it showed through really easily and I could just pencil in my my writing and it's not perfect because it, it's hand drawn you can see those two R's are very different from each other but again it, it's just I don't know I think w one of the things we were talking about all through this what was we were kind of celebrating um imperfection as well you know embracing imperfection and uh, and so I'm quite happy to have some imperfections in my title page I'm actually I'm thrilled to bits with how that came out actually <laughs> It's not often I say that about stuff I've actually made. Okay, so the next thing, I was just going to show you how I'm going to set up to do this front page. So with the rest of them, I've just used the, the plain calico. With with this cover, I want a bit of body to stitch into and to sort of make it feel more solid. So I'm going to use a bit of this felt. It's a nice soft one. I think this is probably an acrylic wool blend by the feel of it. I might also use this sort of faded -y bit, I suppose. I'm not going to worry about turning edges in or anything. I'm leaving frayed edges all through. All the pages have got frayed edges. I've left the squares with frayed edges. And um, I'm quite happy for the cover to have frayed edges. I'm going to do some little uh, tabs for the pages as well. They will also have frayed edges. <laughs> this is my way of getting it roughly straight. <laughs> Very aware that my scissors make a horrible noise on the glass mat. I've been told off once or twice in the comments for that. I can understand it if you say you're watching it with headphones on or something. I can understand it could be a bit jarring. So I'm trying to avoid it if I can. Okay, I think that's good enough. Um, quite good to use the bit that's a bit sort of stained and faded there because um, it's not going to show anyway so I think what I'm going to do is just run a quick kind of basting stitch just around the outside quickly to hold it all in place before I start putting my my pretty bits on the other side so I have just run a, a line of straight stitch around there it's probably a bit of a waste I've used this lovely quilting thread but I just I just love using it I've now got this lovely base to work on and a nice sort of sturdy fabric to stitch into which would be good. Now what I want to use to decorate it is I, I want to do kind of my spin on the Victorian style crazy patchwork because I've got some tiny tiny scraps to use up and I've got these lovely pieces that Pat Havel from in Australia sent me that I'd like to use on the front. I've all, also got some lovely bit like uh, Mary sent me this lovely piece <laughs> she knew that I, I absolutely love pansies and I'd been looking at creating craft with Christine did these beautiful thread painted pansy pins and I thought I could do something like that and incorporate whether this will go on this book or it'll be one of the other books I'm not sure but I've, I've got that handy just in case so they, these I love these um oh look there's this lovely fabric look at this Nancy scent been sent so many lovely things I've actually pinned people's names on some of them so I remember who sent what <laughs> um I said thank you at the time though so <laughs> oh, I've been so spoiled this year with all these lovely things people have sent so this beautiful batik fabric would be lovely to do but I think I'm going to use that one of the I've got at least four volumes to make and I've got lots of different ideas I want to do one with um strips running this way I quite fancy doing for a change I'd like to do a kind of kawandi style one and I'm thinking these these pieces would be lovely to do that with. There's this uh, crazy patchwork style one. I've got I've got all sorts of different ideas that I want to do, and um, I think these the covers for these little books are a good way to play with some different ideas. So, so I think I'm going to use this one for my front cover, and maybe I'll put one on the front and one on the back. And you can see how Pat has patched pieces together like this. It's this kind of 
a little lovely little sweet bits of embroidery there as well it's just such a lovely way to use all these little scraps of of things i've got some little pieces like this as well lovely crocheted lace no is that crocheted or tatted i think that's quite yeah that's crocheted lace i believe look at this beautiful little piece of really fine cross stitching these little pieces also would be nice but i just feel like i'm not sure this is going to work in this on the same cover i don't know but i've got them handy oh what i thought was I, with this smaller ones like this would make really nice page tabs as well and then i've got little scraps of calico i saved as well to make tabs with and i can use some of my lovely buttons and things my my treasured button collection will go on there too just thinking now what i need to do is start placing these on and i've got this little fabric glue pen um it's just it's like a print stick but for fabric and um, it doesn't seem to make it too difficult to stitch through and things you don't get like a horrible sticky needle or anything it's just easier than pinning with these kind of pieces where you want them to sit nice and flat so i'll probably use that to help me along i've got some pins handy as well um i've got also this bag of, of really little scraps um which i'd like to use as well and i think this victorian crazy patchwork type of thing is is the ideal way to use these really little scraps i just i just love i just think that's so beautiful i couldn't possibly throw that away but it's not not a, a massive amount you can do with it um so what i'm going to do is just start placing them placing them down auditioning different pieces a big huge piece there look <laughs> i might cut that up into a smaller a smaller shape um and, and the thing with this with this kind of crazy patchwork style thing is it, even if you get funny little funny little triangular shaped pieces you can still use them you can use yeah so some of these are actually still oh look at that's pretty shit pretty it's nice to have all the different textures and things as well some of these pieces i've got in here are actually quite big i still remember that was one of john's old shirts <laughs> So yeah, I am now going to spend a happy probably hour or two because <laughs> I know what I'm like once I get started, just auditioning all these pieces and sticking them down with the glue. And then at that point, I will come back and yeah, I'm not going to subject you to, to me sitting here talking to myself <laughs> for several hours while I mess about with this. I'll come back when I've stuck them down and, I, and I'm ready to go and show you how it show you how it's looking. Oh, I just thought I'd... Uh stop briefly and show you my process halfway through i ended up going through the bag and picking out some pieces that kind of went together i want them to go together but not go together too well if that makes sense but i thought it will just narrow things down for me a bit if um <laughs> if i just pull a few bits out <laughs> i will keep some of the pieces that i don't use i will keep aside even tiny bits like that to add to little snippets of calico to create and you know and then i'll add buttons and things to create little tabs for the for the pages as well but yes yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to use it's really difficult to to stop my brain trying to make things straight <laughs> because they can be any shape and size you know you can easily use these little funny wonky shaped pieces i really want to fit that piece in so i'm gonna and this you know this that's been um at some point i've got a, a like a backing on that and i die cut something out of it by the look of it and uh, that's left over yeah, I reckon that could go there. Might have to make the heart go over it. I'm tempted to just start stitching the pieces on one at a time and just let it grow organically, but then oh, I might just want to tuck pieces under like I just have there. Oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. Maybe I should save one of these. I've got one of the lace pieces on. Maybe I should save one for one of the other books. Maybe I've got too much on there now. Mm. Some of these... I remember having buying this fabric way back in the early 80s or even earlier um, this was a doll kit that I had <laughs> this is a shirt of Tom's I love when you can look at a piece of fabric and it just reminds you of someone or, or a time or you know and this is such a great way to use those funny old wonky shaped pieces obviously this has been cut as a, a part of a, a garment a facing for a garment or something by the look of it a little bit white it's not a bad idea i kind of put a strip down there i think it, that's marked I'm, I'm marked where i first of all wrapped the book around 
all of the you know the bundle of pages so that I could work out where the hearts needed to go to be central on the front cover and then I marked the centre and put this down thinking I might leave the spine sort of semi clear so that I could do a small piece of embroidery down there just I could put GBLSS for a great big little stitchery swap down there G GBLSS mark one <laughs> maybe mark one one volume one <laughs> I don't know something so I might leave that clip but I might not that might end up being all covered <laughs> I don't know I don't know if that's a bit too, do you think it's a bit too dark? See, I'm getting too thinky-thinky about it now. I mustn't get thinky-thinky about it. You know what I mean? While I'm while I'm busy doing this, I'm watching Christine of Creating Craft with Christine. I'm watching her going through her amazing box of buttons, um, working on her next, getting ready for her next uh, Roxy's Journal of Stitchery prompt, which is all about buttons this time. She's got this incredible box of buttons inherited from her nana. And she's and that she's collected up over the years as well. But uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying a rummage through someone else's button box. Bliss. Now let's put some of these different textures in as well. I want some of this shiny stuff to get a different. Yeah. So yeah, I just um thought I'd I'd come back and just show you where I'm going with this. Once I've kind of got things roughly where I want them to be, I will use my little glue stick to just tack just just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit like there is enough to tack that piece in position while I just do a big a big basting stitch with this thread and this large needle again just to get all the pieces basted down and then I'll be, be ready for I was gonna say the, the fun bit it's all the fun bit this is fun as well I'll be ready to start um, adding lots of stitching to to finish it off I think it'll probably mostly just be straight stitching because I do love that but I might do some um, feather stitch and fly stitch and things in between the squares because I just like doing that Okay, I'm getting to a point where I think I've got almost enough now. There's just a few more bits I want to work in. I wanted a bit of a bit of these ones and I wanted to have a, a little piece on the front and the back cover, so I've cut them in half. I'm just trying to find where I want to put them. A little gap there. like I want to now break this spine up a little bit it looks almost a little bit too tidy doesn't it so I've got lots of stitching and stuff it's not going to end up tidy I suppose let's leave the frayed edge out though so that's it now so now it's going to be a painstaking process of one by one <laughs> trying to lift up these squares and stick them back down in the order that I've got there but I mean it's not too crucial anyway it was funny how red that piece looks on camera it's actually quite uh, more sort of purpley pinky catch it looks different depending on how it catches the light looks really red there quite nice it makes me think maybe I should have a bit more of a bit more of that then I've got I've still got I can still add buttons and stitching and things to bring in any other little snippets of color and then I've still got the tabs to do as well so yes yeah, so I'm gonna start gluing down now and then um based all of the pieces on ready to take downstairs and have fun sort of stitching into them tonight I love doing that's my, probably if I had to pick one favorite bit that would be it right I have finished tacking all of these pieces on and you can see my stitches aren't that careful or anything and they do show I could take these out after I finish my decorative stitching but I won't be I actually really like to see all the working stitching you won't see all of this on the back because that'll be covered up by the inside pages but um yeah I won't I won't be taking them out and I think by the time I've done my decorative stitching over the top these basting stitches kind of become insignificant anyway really so um yeah I'm, I'm I will trim these bits up here like this um, and I will probably fray out all of the edges once I've finished stitching I still haven't quite decided what I'm doing here but I think chances are I will put a sort of miniature title along there um, we'll see um, yeah, so the next time you see this, it will be all covered with decorative stitching. And I'll come back and show you how I'm going to put the finally sort of stitch it all together. But it, this is kind of how it will, kind of how it will look. <laughs> but much prettier. So I'll open it up like that. That'll be the inside page. That'll be the back page. And then in between these two, 
I'll attach my piece of sari ribbon or whatever I decide I'm going to use and then that'll wrap right round and form a, a closure for, for the book. So that's, yeah, that's kind of um, kind of how it's going to be looking. I'm quite enjoying this sort of crazy patchwork idea and I, I think I'm going to really enjoy stitching into all of that now. That's it for today's video. Uh, next time I should be coming back and yeah it'll be the it'll be the last stages i'll only have the sort of tabs and things to put on then so uh hopefully i will be finished my, my aim was to try and finish this first book and get the photos into the online gallery before the next swap starts <laughs> just a bit of a tall order this is not i've got so many other things going on as well but hey ho it's good to have an aim <laughs> deadlines work for me <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know in the comments how you're, what you're doing with your squares and uh, if you're doing a book, how are you putting it together? I think with the, the next two, I've got a couple of other ideas about how you could put fabric books together. So I might try different ideas for the next two just to just to change things, change things up and keep it interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's all from me for now. Um, thanks very much for joining me and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.